Uh, and ham ants? Oh god! Oh no! You guys- Okay, hello everybody, Grace Joe Blaze, and we're checking out a new game for the channel called Pizza Connection 3. Apparently there was a 1 and a 2. This is from like way long ago, the 1 and 2. Like 1 came out in the 90s, and 2 came out in like the early 2000s, I found out. The developer got with me and sent me this one early so I could check it out. Very cool so far. This is a tycoon style of game where you get to own and operate a pizzeria and you legitimately get to do everything. It's pretty slick because there's a little bit of all the different operational stuff in here. You get to pick the location of where you sell pizza. You get to pick the advertising. You get to make the pizzas by choosing the different ingredients. There's like a ton of different ingredients and they work for different types of people. And depending on where your pizzeria is, Different types of people come and visit it. You can hire all kinds of different people. And it even gets to the point where you can make the pizzeria. As in, you can build the rooms and put the tables in certain places. And make the, the kitchens a certain size. Very neat in that way. So we're going to check it out over here. We're gonna probably going to do a little bit of the campaign. This kind of teaches you the game a little bit. Which is good. There's a lot of parts of this campaign. We've got our... Uh, hold on here. We've got our uh, customized brand. I went with... Gray still destroys pizzas.com over here. I hope you know what we're just gonna keep it like this. I did this just to test it out. I want a different logo though. I just chose this because it was one of the first few. There's all kinds of different Is that a pizza skyrocketing into the atmosphere? Looks like a pizza on fire rocketing off in like out of the planet. Just a stack of okay. We're gonna go I think we're gonna go with this one because it's awesome. That one looks legitimately cool. You got like all kinds of stuff. We got your your salt shakers and your pizza. We, what is this? You got a Viking over here, a toilet. We've got a sun that's basically a pizza. I actually like a lot of these. Random bomb. Don't know what that there's for. Uh, you got the king over here if you want to be like the pizza king. But I think we're gonna go with this this blasting off pizza because it's it's epic and I like it. I want a better color. I want like a channel color like we have. Oh, you can't even see the, the white there. That's a little bit better. They don't really have like a gray that we can use. So I think we're going to go with this. Of course, our avatar name, Gray the Sad. There we go. Uh, and you can mess around with your different appearances and stuff. There's all kinds of different body types and everything. I just kind of picked something that's similar to me. So we have a gray-haired, bespeckled, gangly guy. That seems to be pretty impressive. You can choose your... Uh, your clothing colors and stuff. I think what we got right now is okay. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to go over here to the campaign. And now there's there's portions of the campaign where kind of like it uh, narrates what's going on. I'm going to skip past that just because I know you guys are going to want to see the gameplay. But I'll give you I'll give you the lowdown kind of. Welcome everyone to Rome. This is where it all begins, man. There's a whole town here. There's people that wander around. Like I said, there's all kinds of different districts and stuff too where things occur in all kinds of different areas. There's a pizzeria over here that we can rent. There's warehouses, there's a warehouse over here. There's all kinds of different places where you can set up your shop. But in the beginning, all we get is this, a sad little food cart, because this is where it all begins. We're not gonna have it for too long, but this is kind of how you start. It says your first restaurant. The first restaurant of your great uncle was a small pizza truck, and the maintenance was probably not the strongest side of car mine. Swiss bank account, Still contain just over 10 grand. And when parking fees for three years, welding jobs, and other minor repairs, there won't be much left. So basically what happened was our great grand uncle died in the Stardew Valley type of way. And he left us his ailing pizza business. Because basically, I think like it, it almost seems like his uh, his partner in, in pizzery basically scammed him out of the rest of the business and left him with absolutely nothing before he died. So as his great grand nephew. Our job is to once again, this is like how it always is in these games, pull his name out of the mud and make giant stacks of Roman cash. So let's freaking do it. All right, so over here, click on the pizza cart, okay? And now it says, move the pizza cart. So we're gonna go ahead and move it. It already selected a spot for us. Normally, you'd be able to pick your own spot, but we're just kind of like following the tutorial right now. Uh, well, actually, I think we can go anywhere we want. Oh yeah, you can. And these are all the different types of visitors that you'll see. So this spot over here by the cinema is going to give you a ton of teens. You can see there's big shots, oldsters, students, workers, tourists, and teens. And all these different people like different types of pizzas. So let's see. This is a little bit of average of everything. Uh, this is a huge amount of old people. For some, What is over here? Is this like the retirement center or something? Uh, that's very average. Wow, this is a ton of teens. Like, all teens, all- Look at the amount of visitors! Can we even keep up with that much pizza? You- We may want to use this one. Because... 
what I found, you want to keep your pizzas in the beginning like pretty close together in, in ingredient type because if you have too many ingredients, it'll cost you a lot of money and it'll take up a lot of space in, in the little bit of area that you have. Wow. This is really good too. Look at this. There's a ton of workers and stuff like that. But for right now, and this one's nice as well, but for right now, let's go... Let's go with this one. We're going to go with the teens. Hopefully we can impress them. We're going to apply our position here. So that drops our little pizza truck. The front opens and now we have to start making pizzas. So this is the first part of the game where you have to legitimately sit there and make the ingredients of the pizza. Now you can have someone make it yourself, but I think it's cooler to kind of like make it ourselves. So let's go over here with the little pizza square. Click on this. You get to choose the shape of your pizza. So let's go ahead with the traditional round real quick. And now this is where it comes in. Now you get to select not only the size of the ingredient, there's three different levels, kind of like the full ingredient, then like a halved or quartered ingredient, and then like a shaved ingredient, basically. So we have stu um, teens all over the place in this area. So we're going to want stuff that teens enjoy. So looking over here. Okay, so teens like cheese, which is good because I like cheese. Teens love meats. All the different beefs and stuff like that. Uh, and they're not really impressed. And okay, they like the seasoning a little bit. Now we have our smartphone over here. This is kind of keeps the, uh, kind of keeps tabs on our website and everything. And what this does is it lets people, it lets us know what people think about our pizza. So let's start with some delicious cheese. I guess we'll go like pretty traditional here. We'll start with a little bit of mozzarella. Now you can move your cheese around and do all kinds of stuff as you do. So, so far they can afford it. And remember, all this costs different amounts of money. And you got to watch out because like you may want to use ricotta, but it's 20 cents like per eight grams. So sometimes the teens may not be able to afford it. So let's keep stacking some cheese up over here. We'll use a little bit of this. Like, so like I said, if you really want to, you can kind of like change the directional patterns of your cheeses in there, have you? And then let's put on, uh, what else would a teen like? Put on a little bit of, uh, a little bit of Gouda to give it some bite, eh? Put a little bit of that right there. Now, if you look over here, like I said, it's gonna show what the teens think of it. I had to, you have to click on this to see everyone's different interests. But right now, it says, I like the use of ingredients. So, right now, the teens seem to be doing okay. Let's go ahead and give them some different meats. I love pepperoni, so pepperoni's probably good. Ham for a teen is probably good, too. I imagine we're going to want something fairly cheap. Uh, and ham, ants? Oh, God! Oh, no! You got, I, okay. I never really, like, like, I kind of kept it up here when I was messing around. There's grasshoppers and ants? I mean, I guess? That's, I mean, it's, it's got to be legit. The, this game looks pretty legit, so there has to be people that like ants on their pizzas. Let's just go with ham, though. Uh, now, like I said, remember, you can pick, like, big pieces of ham or literally, like, an entire ham, which is ridiculous. So we're going to go ahead and use, like, you know, your chop, your typical chopped ham. So let's go ahead and put some of that on there. You need at least three ingredients now. So let's see if we can get the teens to enjoy this. They're not blowing up our phone yet. Usually you want them to say, like, I like the weight of the pizza, too. You want enough ingredients on the pizza to make, to impress them. There we go. The weight of the pizza is okay. Well, maybe we can make it a little bit heavier with meat. All kids love meat. In fact, let's put some bacon on there too. It's basically double ham. So that's, you know, we got, we got all the hams on this pizza. Okay, so they don't like the amount of toppings. So what you can do is you can go back and that'll get, there we go. And that'll get rid of some of the toppings. So let's see, is it because of, is it because of the meats? How about if we put on some seasoning? How about that? What's our cheapest seasoning over here? A garlic and basil. Curry. Okay, let's... Uh, gar oh, everyone loves garlic. I love garlic on my pizza. So let's see how they feel about a little bit of garlic. I don't like the amount of toppings. Okay, so we don't want to go too far with the toppings. So let's keep it... Um, keep it right about... Don't need too much meat now. Right about like this. I like this. Okay. So now we can go over here. It shows you how much of the uh, different things that we have on it. You get to pick your margin of profit. I mean, obviously you want at least like 100%. I don't know why it had us. Let's set it all the way down here at 10. Let's do... um. Let's do like 110%. We'll, we'll be a little bit pricey for our pizzas over here. And now we got to go ahead and save it and then name it. So we'll call this uh, Gray's Porker. There we go. There's your first one. Now you need at least two pizzas, I think, eventually. Let's see. Your pizza's been saved. Now available in the menu card. Now you can click on the pizza. Every Each restaurant can have up to... 
10 pizzas on the menu card. To use the limited space of your storage room efficiently, remember to keep the amount of different ingredients as low as possible. So that's what I was saying, how you have to keep your ingredients not too crazy. So this is ham, bacon, gouda, and mozzarella. We're probably going to use mozzarella a lot. All right, we're out here by our pizza truck. Go over to the menu, grab the porker, put it on down here. And then it says, the more different recipes you offer, the more satisfied your customers are. Look for new target groups and move your pizza cart if necessary. Additionally, you can also think about changing the opening hours of your pizza cart. Add one more pizza. Okay, so we need another pizza and we are open. Let's see, the most amount of teens, it looks like it peaks right around like eight and then it starts going down a little bit okay so we want to move this over we want to move this probably like right about here maybe yeah right about here that'll get us the most amount of teens so let's go ahead and make one more pizza over in the bakehouse and we want to keep it fairly similar let's do a nice triangular pizza you know kids like different stuff right this is kind of crazy we're going a little bit buck wild over here let's do uh what else should we do for the teens you gotta start with your cheese so we already did our mozzarella. Uh, so this time let's go with, uh, let's go with this over here. This seems pretty interesting. Oh, you know what? Maybe the kids, maybe we'll do like a vegetarian pizza. Yeah. I can afford this pizza. I like the use of the ingredients. Okay, good. So we're going to do a little bit of this. Now this is, okay, they can't afford it. So now it's too, it's too, oh, I can't afford it. Okay, it's just, I thought it said I can't. I don't know why that changed on me. How heavy is this stuff? It's a little bit heavier than the mozzarella. All right, so we got our cheese on and then we want something. The cheese is just kind of like, it makes the team somewhat happy. Let's make them really happy. So let's go back over here. And this time we're going to make, we're going to make a nice classic pepperoni. There we go. Yeah, oh wait, we're going with vegan. Wait, you know what? Hold on. I have an idea. Isn't there, isn't there like, um, like a vegan pepperoni or something? Right over here. Vegan sausage. It's not quite pepperoni, but it's close. Let's go ahead and throw a little bit of this down and see what the teens think about it. We want enough weight on this. Oh yeah, I like, I like a nice amount of pepperoni on my pizza. I like it to the point where I can't even see the pizza anymore, to be quite honest with you. The way of the pizza is okay. All right, I'm, you know what? I think I'm going to put a couple more pieces of cheese on here for the kids. All right. I think that looks pretty good. I like it. 110% vegan cheese, vegan sausage. We're going to say it. Save it. We're going to call this Gray's. Hold on here. Here we go. Gray's Meatless Wonder. Fan freak fantastic. Okay. Let's go click on it. No, not to the bakehouse. Click on it. <laughs> Menu. And then we'll go ahead and move this thing over here. All right. We'll go. right. I'm going to go ahead and get past this real quick. Our great grand uh, uncle was just telling us about how strange the relationship of our mother and her father was, wow, that is a lot of employee, well, not employees, that's a lot of customers, I should say. They are stacking up over here. Holy crap, look at the amount of pizza. I think it's because we're right outside of a school. That's probably why. This is a fantastic place for a pizza cart. So if you want, you can start moving time along. And as you do so, you'll see that people will come in, they'll buy their pizzas. Now, right now, everyone's just kind of like grabbing pizza and leaving. Like, there's no one really sitting down to eat pizza. So this is the very, very earliest part of the business. Let's go ahead and fast forward through here until we have our $3,000 that we need to unlock the next part. And then it says, one of the guests, an old, I think it's supposed to be like an older or whatever it's called already. Oh, it's one of the guests, an old, already very bent man. <laughs> okay. Makes you a suggestion. I represent, well, I knew your great uncle. He asked me to watch your activities and I'm impressed. So I'd like to offer you taking over one of Carmine's former restaurants. I'm sorry that I have to charge a certain amount of costs, but I hope you're interested. All right, so now this is it. Now we get our first pizzeria. It looks like a McDonald's, but I mean, I'm not gonna complain. I mean, we've got some, uh, you know, we got some little palm tree looking things out here, some benches. We're right on a corner, which is fantastic. In fact, we got a, uh, we got a light right over here. So hopefully we'll get some decent people coming in. 4,500 bucks so he can retire. And then we need our startup capital. So we're going to have to make a little bit more money. Is that a yacht over there? That's a killer boat. So right now we've shut down shop. So we have to speed time along a little bit because I don't think we open until like eight or nine. And then once we open, the money should start rolling in. Because like I said, like it was just a pile of kids during school time. I don't know what that was. That was either like a teacher or a, a murderer potentially. All the kids want to listen to people. Ah, here we go. P they're starting to deviate. That's right, education's important, but pizza's more so. That's right, everyone crossing the street. Oh, this is a killer place. It really is. What is this over here? Oh, this is probably one of the advertisements that you can get. 
It's like a um, it's like a sign, but it swivels. That's pretty cool. So right now we should have a bunch of kids lining up to buy the pizzas. All right, sales are looking good. You can check out all your different numbers and stuff over here if you want to, but we don't actually own a restaurant yet. So all the the only things that we can see is like our menu, our supplies, and it shows you like the utilization. So like ham is a big item here. Like these kids love the ham, the vegan cheese. And the vegan sausage doesn't look like we're really using that much of it. The ham is big though, uh, as is the mozzarella cheese. So kids kind of like what I what I figured they would like. Let's move things along here. And there we go. We just completed the very first step to establishing our brand in Rome. And now we're going to get to utilize the brand new restaurant. All right, so now it says the restaurant that you were offered is not exactly first class. The location is mediocre and it looks a bit run down. 5,000 plus rent is already steep. But the place is fully furnished, which saves a lot of money. All you need is personnel to set up two shifts. To save money, you should try and keep your average employee costs as low as possible. Take into account that each employee is different, uh, has different attributes. Cooks should be good at cooking quality. A service employee needs to be fast. Okay, so this is our area. This is like our storehouse. This is just our little service area where people can sit down and eat. And then we have our tiny little kitchen over here. So first things first. We got to go over to employees and we need to start hiring people. This restaurant causes fixed costs, so you should make sure not to hire employees that are too expensive. Click on the blink. Okay, so we've done that. We're over here in the employee area and we're going to want two cooks, two service people, and then two stalkers. So not stalkers, stock. Let's go over here. You can sort them by all their different abilities. I like to kind of sort them by money. And like, so I know the area that I want to look in. Uh, and I think I'd like to keep it maybe like right around 200 bucks. Because it goes all the way up to 500. Salvatore Constantino is a hell of a guy. Uh, he's almost like full marks in everything. But that is a lot of money for our very, very first starting business. This guy over here is really fast, but his cooking is garbage. Let's go for, let's see. Let's go for Gaia Ferrari. She sounds amazing. Uh, and she's pretty good. At, she's decent at both things. And we have to look at what we're dealing with here. So in this restaurant, it's not really a great area. It looks like the end of the day gets the most amount of people from like 12 to midnight. And at that point, we're looking at, what are we looking at? Oldsters and tourists and teens. Oldsters, tourists, and teens. Okay. And then each one of these blocks is, what do they do? Like from 9 to 1500 hours. Okay, so we'll use her. And how about Giacomo Parisi? We'll use him as well. And we're going to go right in this area, this 12 to 24 area, because I think that has a decent amount of different people that'll come in and buy our different pizzas. The beginning of the morning is actually pretty good too when it comes to tourists and students. You know what? Let's do this. Like right about here, and then we'll put, uh, yeah, right about like here and here. There we go. So we're a late night pizza joint, but there's some really good like perks over here in the expected visitor area. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So now we have two of those guys. Uh, we're going to need some service people. So the service people are a little bit cheaper. Wow, look at this guy right over here. He's like got full marks in everything. I mean, there's people that are better, but look at the stack this guy has. Um, and then there's like some average people over here as well, like Marco. But let's go with, I'm going to get this guy. He's a little bit expensive, but he's pretty slick. Let's put him over here when the, uh, when the big bumps are. And then we'll put something with maybe a little bit less skills, like Marco. We'll put him over here. There we go. That's a little bit, that's a little bit better. So really early in the morning is when should we should be hitting like our big stride. All right. Now we need two suppliers. They deliver a different amount of ingredients and they move faster and slower. So we're going to want the better one at the end of the day. So let's take a look at what we have over here. Uh, let's see. Who has like a good amount of both, I would say. And once you start getting to the bottom over here, it's pretty craptastic no matter where you look. If you want to spend 192 this one is okay. Antonio. All right, yeah, we're going to splurge for Antonio right over here. And then earlier in the day, we'll go with, let's see, what do we have over here? E is that? Il Ilaria? Fabri? That sounds pretty cool. We could use her. Yeah, let's go ahead and use her. And we'll put her right over there. Okay. So now everyone's stacked up appropriately and we're all ready to go. The customers want to eat. Now that the crew is ready to work, it's time to design the menu. Create three more pizzas and put them on the menu card. So specifically, 
We want to make sure that we cater to students and tourists. So students and tourists. Now teens, there's some. So the pizzas that we have should be okay. But let's see if we can make some tourists and, uh, well, let's put these on here real quick. And we have to make three more. So let's go ahead and do that. So tourists and students. All right, let's go with the crazy pizza. We don't have one of those yet. Oh, and now this is neat. So now that we've got a legitimate restaurant, we get an idea of what the, uh, the customers think of our pizza. Oh, this is really cool. You can shape the pizza however you want by clicking and dragging on it. That's neat. Huh. I didn't know that. So you can kind of like, I still, that's, that's so strange. Like it was still like this weird kind of jacked up pizza. Like I don't mind it. It looked okay. Oh yeah, there we go. A lovely gelatinous blob. Okay. So tourists and students seem to like vegetables. So that's good. Uh, they both feel okay about cheese. Eh, tourists like meats. There, and they both love, uh, spices. So let's start. We ha I mean, we have to have some cheese, right? And we're already utilizing mozzarella and gouda. So let's go ahead and keep using that. Oh, and you can change the sizes, by the way, with this slicer over here. If you right-click, it gets bigger. If you left-click, it gets smaller, which is kind of cool. Oh, student, mozzarella on a pizza is perfect. Okay, so they like the mozzarella, but they don't, they don't like the overall pizza that much. So we're going to need to use stuff that they like. So remember, students and tourists like the different vegetables. So what kind of vegetables would they like on this, I wonder? How about, that? we got rocket salad, spinach. Ah, now mu I love mushrooms, I like onions too. Let's throw some onions and mushrooms on here. That sounds, that sounds like a good idea. A little bit of these over here, a couple of those. I like the use of ingredients, okay. Not too many now, we'll do like, maybe like that. And now we'll throw on a cup, we'll throw on a couple of mushrooms per chance, just like this, there we go. All right, onions. We got our uh, mushrooms, and now let's put some, uh, well, let's see, I always like my oregano. That's pretty expensive though, huh? The oregano is actually really expensive. Maybe some uh, rosemary and basil? How about a little rosemary and basil? We see how, we'll see how the, how the tourists and the students feel about that. All right, we go ahead and made one over here. It's okay, the students like it, the workers think it's okay. Man, getting the tourists to enjoy this? It's actually a lot harder than I thought. We're gonna call this Gray Student Cablamo right over there. We did end up using a lot of different ingredients. Like I said, we probably shouldn't be using that many ingredients. I'm gonna try and keep the next pizza a little bit less ingredient intensive. All right, I call this one bacon and eggs. The oldsters and the teens really like it. Man, the freaking tourists. They're so, they're such pain in the asses. I'm gonna call it, yeah, this is gonna be called Gray's Bacon and eggs, because it's got bacon and eggs. The eggs are like super heavy though, and I tried to pick the smallest ones I could. And now we're gonna need one more. Okay, so one more. I'm gonna see if I can get these freaking tourists to enjoy this stuff, but man, it's tough. All right, and on this one, we've got garlic, anchovies, and bell peppers. So again, a little bit heavy on the ingredients, but you know what? I wanna try some, dis some different stuff for the gameplay. So this is what we're gonna use over here. We're gonna go ahead and save it. And we're gonna call this Gray's anchovy madness. I forgot how to spell anchovy, so I had to go over here and look at it. Okay, we're all set. We've made three different recipes. Let's get out of here, click on this, go over to the menu, throw them all down there. Oh wow, the satisfaction for everyone is actually pretty good. Um, The workers are super happy about it. Now the ones that we wanted was Whoa, hi there, regular narrator guy. Let me go ahead and move past this. Basically, it was just saying that there's another person out here on the map, and there are enemy. Uh, so there are competition on the map as it is. So customers want diversity, and we should we have a very diverse menu. Now, you can move down here, and you can see everything if you want. But yeah, we have a pretty diverse menu for the most part. All of our stuff is set up correctly. Yeah, it all looks good. Okay, good. Uh, we don't have any stats yet, so we don't have to worry about that. The only thing that we're not really catering to is the big shots. So we need a satisfaction of greater than 45% with at least three different types of people. And I think we're easily going to get it, especially the, uh, the workers, the oldsters, and the teens. But let's see, here comes our guy. He's stocking in right now. You can see all the different boxes and stuff on the shelves. Now you can move things along over here to get people to start like rolling on in. There we go. Remember, we're a late night pizzeria over here. We got big, big Barney kind of challenge. I think you can click on these people. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Pe Petro Santa, he's a worker, he says, I really enjoyed the short wait time at La Venda- La Vendetta. La Vendetta. He had the Grace Porker, 
Uh, furniture. So this shows what he thought about everything at a restaurant. That's really cool. That's neat how they kind of give you their opinion after they're done eating. But it's all a matter of whether or not our dude over here can keep up with all the stuff. Now you can manage him. I don't know if you can give him like a raise or make him work faster or anything like that. I know you can fire him, but I'm not really sure what else you can do. I'm very curious what this guy thinks after he's done. Now right now, brand image. Kind of average. Okay, he likes us a little bit more. So he went from just kind of like, eh, to thinking that we're pretty legit. How did he feel over here? I enjoyed the short waiting. Okay, very good. So we've got a satisfaction. You can see what pizza they get too, which is really cool. Like the pizzas legitimately change depending on what people order. But you can see our satisfaction of students and workers is already through the roof. These guys are loving whatever pizza this is. Oh, here we go. Show the city you can make the restaurant profitable. Then you get new offers. We need 15 grand. I think we're going to get there pretty quick. So, sure. We're at 9,000 right now. We need 15 grand. So, between now and 3 o'clock, we should be getting a good spike in tourists and the uh, students. That's what we're looking for specifically. So, there, there's a teen right over there. I didn't know they made little sounds. We've got Serena Pellegrini. They're all just kind of average right now. Now, I wonder if the time goes as time goes on, if you can, like, really turn people into true lovers of your pizza so over here we've got another pizza going down the teens are coming in which is fine they seem to be enjoying it very good everyone's eating alone everyone likes the short wait times so based on the price so everyone our prices seem to be right the ingredient quality is kind of average right now it looks like everyone's just kind of like eh on the ingredient quality what do you think about this uh, ingredient quality is and eh, the price is okay. We could probably even move up our price a little bit if we wanted to. But for right now, we'll go ahead and fast forward things along a little bit. Oh, and you can see, did you see how there was different uh, shapes of pizzas that people were getting fed? Let's go ahead and keep moving things along. Now, we're closed right now, so we're not making any money. Got to wait a little bit over here. Oh, and that reminds me, by the way, we still have the pizza truck recognized. The pizza truck is still working over here. So we're managing the other place, but we're essentially working this pizza truck. So, oh, as a matter of fact, you know what? If we wanted to, we could put more of these items on the menu. It just means that we would have to, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see how this changes stuff. Oh, there we go. There we go. The teens love that. Let's, uh, let's do that right there. Oh, we did it. It's pleasing the people of Rome. Take the next step and expand your local dominance. Okay, I imagine there's gonna be another little narrative thing in just a second over here. The teens love our uh, our bacon and egg pizza because it's super cheap. Your father had what to disappear this? to save your life and your mother's. Oh. And it wasn't the Frodados who threatened them. Okay. For all we know, he's still alive. Thank you, random narrator. Dear Mr. Montago. Is that us? I'm guessing we're the Montagos, but... That's fine. Arturo Andrasetti says there's another interesting location in a good in a good location empty. This is why reading this stuff is a little bit difficult sometimes. The, some of the some of the grammar is a little weird. You should lease it and expand your business. Okay, so now we can have a third building, but they, well, a second building, but a third business. And this is different because now we get to legitimately utilize the architecture menu. So I guess let's give it a shot over here. Uh, let's see. Change the layout. The best option is to probably have a restaurant with three rooms, a kitchen, a dining room, and a storage, okay? Oh, we can change, we can change the shape of the building. Look, here's like one building shape. Let's see, that's four rooms. I don't think we need all that. So we only really need three right now. There's this one over here and this one over here. Obviously this one gives us, it looks like a little bit more space for our dining area. I kind of like that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and apply this one. I think this is the one that we're gonna go ahead and use. So now, we have to turn this into, I like, I want this to be a dining room. Then we'll make our storage over here. And we'll make our kitchen over here. And I think that's the way we're going to do it. I assume this is how you can do this. I mean, I, I, I would assume that people know to come in this way. Or should we have them coming in? Well, this is right over by the park. I was going to say, I didn't know if we should have our entrance over here by the roadway. But this is nice too. Like this park and this, um, this subway and stuff like that. I think that would be fine. All right, so now it says equip the kitchen. To in order your cook to work, please open the kitchen equipment menu and then place a workstation in the kitchen. Okay, so I'm guessing this is this. And then we need a workstation. We can have a rustic, we can have a modern, we can have a classic, or we can have an oven. So let's see. They all seem to, they all basically seem to do exactly the same thing. So it's not like a huge deal. So do we want kind of like a more modern or a more rustic one? Ah, uh, let's go with modern. Let's try that. 
Okay, so we can grab one of these, and now can you, um, can you move it around? Ah, right clicking moves all over the place. Okay. So, let's see. Can we put it right over here then? So we have, I think that that's the, the way that we're going to want it. Yeah, we're going to want it this way. So the guy has enough space to sit down and use his stuff. Okay, there we go. We've got a we've got a workstation now. Now we need four tables and 16 chairs. So over here to the table menu. Uh, rustic. Okay, so all these are very simple. Yeah, as you open up more, they get a little bit more impressive. But right over here, we're going with the modern look. So let's continue to go with the modern look. We'll use these ones over here. And we'll try. I think you can move these after you put them down. I'm pretty sure you can anyway. So let's go ahead and get this. We'll put one over there. We'll put one over here. And then we'll put one over here, and then one over here. I may need to move these over a little bit, or back, I should say. Ah, here we go. With this button over here, we can move anything however we want it. I like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and move these, like, one up, I think. Like, right about like that. Okay, now let's see if we can fit our chairs in here. So we need 16 chairs, so we're going to need chairs on all sides. Delicious modern chair, as you do. Uh, and like I said, it seems like everyone is pretty averagely impressed with the different styles of chairs and stuff. So we'll just use these over here. So we'll put one like this. Yeah, we may need to, we may need to even move it back a little bit. Let's go ahead and loom down a little bit. One like this, one like this, and then one up here. There we go. All right. I've got everything set up where I want it. Now, I imagine all we need next is to make sure that we have this place staffed. And then set up the timeline and everything that we want for it. What does it say? I like the way you handle your business. It would be my pleasure to make you an offer you can't refuse. Fulfill my requests within the next couple of days. If you get into financial trouble, I'll help you out. Every contribution to Seize Wealth is warmly welcome. Well, thank you, good sir. The mayor freaking loves us. Fulfill requests. Did a great job at the first restaurant. This time you should go full force. You need more and better employees. To further improve your profit margin, you should increase the opening hours of your restaurant. Three shifts now. So go and prepare everything. Okay, so now we need three full shifts. Let's go over to... Actually, what type of people are we dealing with at this restaurant? Let's go ahead and click on this. So we're going to be dealing with basically the same types of people that we were dealing with before. So this is going to be kind of like a, a later open style of restaurant. All right. I've got all my shifts set up. We've got, we're going from 12 until like 6 in the morning. So this is kind of an interesting time to be using stuff over here. So we're ready to go. Three shifts. And let's see. What other requests do we have to do, I do wonder? Oh, the menu. We've got to set the menu up over here. Let's go ahead and throw all of our pizzas down. Should keep everyone basically happy for the most part. Looking good. Okay, all the pizzas are down. Fantastic. I think that's pretty much it at this point. I don't know what other requests there are. All right, here we go. The very first delivery of ingredients went in. Oh, we get to see our guy legitimately making the pizzas right now. Now, it's going to take a little bit because our ingredients finally started rolling on in over here. So our buddy is starting to serve. We've got a couple of service guys peeling on down over here. Did I have them stacked double? I didn't think I had them stacked double. Let me, let me check over here, though. I do want to make absolutely sure that everything's stacked appropriately. Everything looks to be stacked appropriately. But whatever. I'm okay with it. Now, if we want, remember, we can rename these. So this can be, like, Gray's... Great mistake. Two. There we go. That's what we'll use for this pizzeria. Wow. We're getting a lot of people in this place. Look at all this. Look at all these people. They're coming in. They're firing it. We got tourists over here. We got oldsters. We have... Uh, someone just ate something. This lady over here wearing the super short short. I think that's the woman? Yeah. Waiting times are outrageous. Oh. Crap. Well, I didn't know it would be quite this... Wow, this is really busy. Like... Uh, okay. Another one of these. I'll, I'll give you the lowdown in a second here. So basically, he was telling us that our mom's death was very suspicious. She died when we were two years old. They said it was a heart attack, but it didn't make any sense. And thus, the plot thickens. Can you... We are, like, running out of ingredients over here. Probably because I have too many different pizzas, I would say. I don't know what the profit margin on this place is going to look like. Actually, our profits are still going up, but it's more or less a question of how do people feel after they eat here. Like, was this guy even able to eat? Now, the wait times are outrageous. The price is right. And the furniture is fantastic. But it's just a matter of whether or not they can be waited on on time. I'm gonna have to get... I'm gonna have to get, like, more waiters. Because there's so many people that are coming in. We can't feed them all at the same... I mean, this is a great location. Don't get me wrong. There is a lot of people coming in here. But we're probably gonna have to hire twice as much staff. Alright, so what I went ahead and did... 
was I decided to get twice as much of everything. These are very low tier guys. I got like the cheapest money could buy. But now at least we can serve people. So we've got a lot more materials coming in. We have a lot more people getting served. Yeah, see right here? Now everyone's getting their pizzas. The furniture at Gray's Great Mistake 2 is amazing. Got another delicious pizza coming out over here. This guy should be very happy to eat it in just a second. Go ahead and slow things down. Now, how did, how did he feel about this? I really enjoyed the short waiting times. Now, let's see what happens when it really starts to stack up with people over here. How'd this guy feel about it? I didn't feel very welcome. That's probably because our uh, our server is kind of craptastic. I enjoyed the short waiting times. Okay, good. This guy haven't hasn't had his pizza yet, but you can see the profit margins are quickly starting to go up now that we can legitimately feed all of these different people. The furniture was amazing. Everyone's enjoying it. We got more uh, resources coming in over here for the storeroom, which is fantastic. We got like Al Bologna over here ordering a pizza. Everything's looking really good, guys. This is uh. Pizza Connection 3, what do you think about it? Feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to have links in the description if you want to check the game out in the future as well. Very cool tycoon style of game. There is a free mode if you just want to play forever and do as much as you can. Or we can continue with our uh, campaign mode, which is pretty neat too. Anyway, folks, until the next time, stay foxy and much love.